Hi class, this is Sir Alex again and welcome to our lesson in general uh, physics 1. We are finishing today lesson 4, focusing on lesson 4.3 which is the Newton's third law in motion. We will be quickly discussing that and then we will be focusing much of the time discussing friction and how friction affects motion. So, so far all the discussions that we have done, uh, including the Atwood, uh, the motion along an inclined plane or even uh, the surface, horizontal surface, uh, most of the time we've been discussing surfaces that doesn't have friction. So today we'll be looking at how friction actually affects the motion. So at the end of today's lesson, the things that I want uh, everyone to remember is and be able to do is for you to be able to differentiate uh, two properties of friction called the static and kinetic friction. So today we will be discussing what is the static and kinetic friction. At the same time, for you guys to be able to solve problems that includes uh, Newton's law on motion, more uh, especially in the context of applying friction. But before we'll be able to do this too, let's go first and discuss uh, quickly discuss Newton's third law on motion or the law of interaction. So if you guys remember from the previous discussions we've had, uh, law of interaction states that one body, when one body exerts a force onto another body, or in this case, when body A exerts a force on body B, body B will exert an equal but oppositely directed force on body A. We can actually see that on examples like a bat and a baseball. So as the ball, uh, as the bat hits the ball, the bat exerts a force onto the ball. So if we can like draw it, so we have object A, which is the ball, and then we have the, let's say we have a bat right here. So as the bat hits the ball, the bat exerts a force onto the ball. But at the same time, the ball also exerts a force equal uh, of equal magnitude, but in the opposite direction of the force exerted by the bat. So this force right here is from bat to ball, but this force right here is from the ball towards the bat. So meaning the force exerted onto the ball is caused by the bat or caused by the bat and the force exerted onto the bat is caused, is caused by the ball. And this is what we call action reaction so this is a type of an action reaction where in the action of heating the ball using the bat will result in a reaction where in the ball coat quotation mark hits the bat as well and again they're equal magnitude so meaning they are equal in strength you can think about that but uh, the difference is that the direction of the force would be opposite to each other the Newton's third law in motion is also the reason how we can actually walk. Because when we are walking, we are actually exerting a force uh, towards the earth. So as we walk, we are exerting a force towards the earth. And then at the same time, the earth exerts a force uh, in the opposite direction of the force we exerted onto the earth. So this is from the man to the earth so the direction of this it originates from the man and it exerts it onto the earth but this force right here is the earth exerting a force onto this man that's why we were actually able to walk equal but opposite directed force the same thing uh, on how we can jump we exerts a force towards the floor towards the surface of the earth and then the earth exerts a force onto us, uh, basically pushing us up into the air. That's how we jump. So that's how we can actually explain how we can uh, how we can walk onto the earth using the third law on motion. But one thing that I want you guys to remember is that um, these uh, forces are directed, are caused by the two objects. And they are directed at the two objects. So what that means is, let's take an example, the horse cart paradox. 
So in the story of the horse card paradox is you have a horse, a talking horse in this case, and he's kind of cheeky. And he's thinking, telling his trainer, telling the person is that um, it doesn't matter uh, if I pull the cart. Because if I pull the cart, the cart will pull me back. Meaning, it will can it will cancel the force that I exert onto the cart. Uh, so it means it's worthless. I cannot move the cart. So the question is, why can something move? For example, in here, if I hit the ball, it will still move if they're equal but opposite directed force. Bakit pa rin siya move? The reason for that is because the force exerted is not onto the same object but onto the opposite object. So for example, you have a cart and you have, a, this is your horse. So this is your horse and this is your cart. Okay. Let's put it this way. This is your horse and this is your cart. So when the horse pulls onto the cart, it, it, it is exerting a force onto the cart. Tama? So the force exerted by the horse is, uh, is towards the cart. The, the law of uh, motion of interaction is this cart will also exert an equal but opposite force to the horse. What that means is that the still possible uh, the force, the forces that are opposite uh, to each other will not cancel. The reason being is because they are uh, they are being acted upon uh, to two different objects. So what that means is that this cart, if this is, if this force tends to become higher, it can accelerate. Uh, the cart, the, uh, the, kaya, so ito is equal dito, tama? Pero the reason na mag-move yung cart, kasi ang um, uh, opposite direction, hindi siya sa cart, pero dun sa horse. Uh, mag-move siya, kap, uh, ang cart, kapag yung force na to is mas malaki kesa sa force ng friction. So these two equal, these two equal but oppositely directed force is not, uh, is not force that is acting on a uh, single object. Kasi kung single object lang siya, hindi mag-move yung uh, object. So limbawa, uh, so sample na to, sige. So an object weighs uh, 30 newtons rest on the table. What are the forces acting on this object? What are the reactions to these forces? So, for example, you have a table. So, let's say this is your table. And then you have an object on the table. And we know that this object has a force acting on it called the weight. And madalas na sinasabi natin, there's an equal, since hindi nagmumove yung object going up and down, there is an equal force called the normal force, and this force is exerted onto the table. So, saan pumapasok yung third law of motion? Kung ang third law of motion, this opposite direction should actually be, uh, ang tawag dito? It is being enacted or they're being done on the two objects. So, ang nangyari talaga is similar to this. You have the table. Again, so we have a table here. And then you have the object. Yung weight na na-experience nung object is actually, uh, this is the pull by the earth is actually uh, parang natatrans hindi man natatransfer pero it is being exerted that's the term correct word so there is a force pulling the object uh, this object down towards the center of the earth called the weight 
And at the same time, since makita nyo yung nagko-contract sila, this force is also exerted, is being exerted onto this table. And then, since meron uh, force na may exert dun sa table, this table will actually have to exert an equal force. So, parang ganun yung nangyayari. So, ang uh, action-reaction dyan is yung object exerts a force onto the table. Ito yun. That's the reaction. And then, yung mangyayari is yung table mag-exert siya ng equal but opposite force. Ito yung Fn. So, parang sinashortcut na lang natin siya na ganito kasi equal naman yung forces. Pero ang talaga nangyayari is yung weight na in-exert ng earth, yung pull ng earth dun sa object, is being exerted dun sa table. Tapos binabalik lang ng table in the form of normal force. So yun yung reaction form. So kung isa-separate mo yung dalawa, kumbaga ito yung object, so meron siyang Fn, and meron siyang weight. So meron siyang weight, and this weight is being exerted on this table. So, kumbaga, you can erase that. Kasi, it, uh, that weight is being exerted onto the table. So, that is the action-reaction na nangyayari. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So, what are the forces acting on the object? It's basically the weight, the pull of the earth. It's pulling it towards the center of the earth. Pero, kung tinanggal mo yan, bababa pa rin siya until na makapunta siya dun sa ground, dun sa floor. Pero dahil may table, yung pull niya, uh, yung force ng pull na yun, na-exert dun sa table instead, and then yung table will exert a reaction force called the normal force. So, ganun yung uh, Newton's third law of motion. Yung force is not on the, yung exerted force na equal but opposite is not on a single body, it's not on a single object, but it's on to the different Okay, I hope that is clear. Uh, that is third law of motion. We won't have a really complication in this one. Um, uh, it's just a concept that I want you guys to remember. Now let's move on to friction, which will be the main focus of our today's lesson. So let's begin by understanding what is friction. Friction is basically a force. Again, it's a type of force that resists the object's tendency to move. So, kapag may isang malaking, o oh, sige, sasakyan, nasa garahe yung sasakyan, if you started pushing the, uh, started pushing the car, uh, the reason that it doesn't move easily is because of friction. Not only because of the weight. Uh, remember, uh, the higher the weight, the lower the acceleration. Not only the reason na mas, na dahil mabigat yung car, also, because hindi mo yung force na in-exert mo dun sa car, hindi niya na-overcome yung friction uh, na in-exert nung surface or nung ground, nung ground floor ng garage dun sa car. Because it's a force that receives the movement of an, or the tendency of an object to move. It arises because of the unevenness or roughness of the surface in contact. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga chinelas nyo, yung sapatos nyo, if you look at the soles of, uh, on the feet of your um, slippers and your shoes, you would see that uh, they tend to have parang creases, hindi siya flat. Kasi kung flat siya, uh, you will slip and you will fall. No? The reason that they want to have the soles of your shoes and your slippers very rough uh, minsan creases siya or may mga crosses dyan or there is something, it's not a flat uh, surface, it's because they they want to add friction para hindi kayo nadudulas. So there are different types of friction. One is the sliding, uh, which we will be discussing today, examples of which is static and kinetic. There's another one that is rolling and there's another one that is viscous and fluid. Viscous and fluid is similar to the drag force na pinag-usapan natin. And this is the friction that is uh, happening on an object that is on the water. Uh, sliding is basically an object sliding past each other. 
enrolling is most likely kapag, or not most likely, is kapag meron kayong mga um, rolling object like wheels or bearings, something like that. But for this class, we will be focusing mostly on sliding, specifically static and kinetic. Important shift friction because it actually allows us to be able to walk. Kung wala ng friction, madudulas ka. Parang you can think of it as a uh, treadmill. So you can keep walking, pero hindi ka nagmove, or kasi hindi ka you won't be able to push yourself. Uh, so hindi mo maexert yung force dun sa earth and then the earth cannot push you back up for you to be able to step uh, for you, in order for you to be able to step so parang you will just fall and slide another thing is for you to be able to hold like for example your phone your uh, pen or your books or play computer whatever it is because of friction then uh, hindi nadulas yung phone mo sa kamay mo uh, because of friction uh, those are the good things about friction pero meron din mga bad things uh, one thing is wear and tear so yung mga machineries madali sila masira for example yung car nyo na lang yung tires ng car niyo mansan after a long time the tires kailangan palitan yung tire na sasakyan mo kasi napukudpud na siya and nawawalan na yung friction mas mahirapan na mabreak yung car mo and that's prone to accident and that is because of the friction na nag-wear and tear yung tubong and also it generates heat so it generates energy uh think that i want you guys to remember about friction these are laws on friction one is the static is the static friction is is always larger than kinetic friction specifically we are talking about the maximum static friction amaya you will learn what is static maximum or maximum static friction pero i want you guys to remember that static friction will always be or is uh, always higher or larger than the kinetic friction and we can see that in our real world situation because we need more force to move an object it is more tiring it is more force consuming it is more energy consuming to move object than to maintain its movement once na yung object is start na siya move it is easier to uh, maintain that speed or to maintain that movement. Balik tayo dun sa example na nagtutulak ng sasakyan. So, kapag tumirik yung sasakyan mo sa daan, uh, yung initial, so, kailangan magtulak ng sasakyan, yung initial na tulak mo ng sasakyan, medyo, you have to exert a stronger force in order for you to change the movement from resting to moving. Kasi, yung static friction, which is the friction related to a an object that is not moving or that is not or that is resting it is higher kesa dun sa friction kapag nag-start na siyang gumalaw okay so i want you guys to remember that another thing is friction is always parallel to the surface in contact friction cannot also produce the motion it opposes it so friction is not a force that can result into an object moving because uh, friction is what actually stops the object from moving so similarly you were able to hold your phone it's because it stops friction stops the phone from slipping past your fingers okay friction is independent of area or independent of area or contact uh, area of contact is independent of area of contact and speed. So, yung friction, uh, <clears throat> uh, independent sa area ng contact, meaning kung mas uh, malaki yung, halimbawa, you have a, um, let's say, meron kayong crate, and magkaibang size yung crate. So, yung size ng, di and yung dimension ng crate, parang kumbaga, mas malaki yung area ng contact dun sa floor ng isang crate compared sa, uh, sa isang crate na mas malaki, yung area ng contact niya dun sa ground does not affect the friction. Um, let's just leave it at that. Let's not make it confusing anymore. Um, pero one thing that I want you guys to remember, friction is proportional. This is a symbol for proportional. 
to the normal force. Remember, normal force is the force exerted uh, by the surface kung saan naka-rest or kung saan nakapatong yung isang bagay. So, again, dun sa box on the table, the normal force is being exerted onto the object via the table. And the friction is related. So, proportional siya dun sa normal force. The higher the normal force, the higher the friction. Kumbaga. So, just remember this because we are going back to this principle when we start solving for problems. Another thing is friction depends on the nature of the surfaces. So, depende sa kung anong klaseng um, tawag dito, kung, kung anong klaseng property yung object mo. Halimbawa, you have a rubber shoes on to a concrete floor. Uh, iba yung friction niya kung dun sa rubber shoes mo sa grass or dun sa rubber shoes mo dun sa tiled floor. Uh, Iba-iba yung friction niya. Mag-iba yung friction niya depende dun sa nature ng mga surfaces na magkocontact. Again, so halimbawa yung rubber shoes mo, iba yung friction niya kapag nasa grass ka or if you are running on to a concrete or if you are walking or running on to a tiled floor, mag-iba yung friction. So those are the things that I just want you guys to remember. Pero mainly, the static and kinetic, static is larger. That's why it is harder to move it's harder to force a, to move an object than to maintain its movement and friction is proportional to the normal force. Okay, let's look at this. So you have an object at rest, at rest, at rest. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to push it. So this is the force. And as you can see, we are increasing the force. And then yare, as you actually increase the force, the friction Oppose that force is actually also increasing until such a time it reaches a certain maximum. So, yung point na to, yung tinatawag natin na maximum or static, uh, static friction. Okay, so you have an object that is resting and you are applying the force. And as you gradually increase that force that you're applying, the friction is actually also increasing. So as you can see, you are increasing the applied force. Kaya lumalaki yung magnitude ng araw mo. At the same time, yung friction, this is your friction that is opposing. This is a type of a static friction kasi hindi pa gumagalaw yung object. Ano nangyari is that this friction, the static friction, is also increasing as long as na hindi gumagalaw yung object, pero you are increasing the force. So, increasing force also increase in the static friction until it reaches a time or at a certain moment called the maximum static friction. The maximum static friction is the maximum friction na kayang ibigay nung dalawang surface para hindi mag-move yung object. Once you overcome, lumagpas ka, yung lumagpas yung strength ng force, dun sa static friction, it will move to what we call a kinetic force. Or a kinetic friction. Again, the kinetic friction is lower than the static friction. So, ito yung static friction mo. Ito yung kinetic friction mo. This kinetic friction is the friction now as the object is moving. So, it will switch from a static, static meaning na not moving, kinetic, kinetic meaning, meaning it's moving. So, yun lang yung principle na I want you guys to remember. In order for an object to move, kailangan niyang ma-overcome yung maximum static friction. And once na ma-overcome niya yung static, um, maximum static friction, the force overcomes the maximum static friction. The static friction will change from static friction to kinetic friction. And this friction is the friction of uh, rela uh, relative to the movement of the object. So, yun. So, yung lumalaki yung friction, biglang lumiit kasi it overcomes the static friction and then the object will move. So, just a summary, increasing the applied force increases the, the kinetic or the static 
friction. When the um, when the static friction which is the maximum of uh, the maximum value so it reaches the maximum value the object is about to move so ready na siyang gumalaw so kapag nandito na siya sa maximum uh, sa maximum value ng static friction mo the object is ready to move once the uh, maximum static friction is exceeded so yung applied force exceeds the <coughs> uh, maximum static friction, the object will move. And the friction will change from static uh, max friction or max static friction to a kinetic friction, which is the friction as the object slides over another. So I hope you guys understand what is happening ngayon. Now let's look at some important equation that I want you guys to remember. Uh, from the laws on friction, we've discussed that friction is proportional to the normal force. So this is the normal force. So I think problem sa depiction na to. And the friction, this arrow right here, is proportional to this uh, what we call normal force. In the sense that the maximum static friction is equal to the normal force multiplied by coefficient of a static friction. So, mamaya pag-usapan natin ano yung coefficient of a static friction. And then, sa kinetic friction, kinetic friction is also proportional to the normal force. You just have to multiply the normal force to the coefficient of the kinetic friction. So, the coefficient of a static friction and the coefficient of kinetic friction, uh, ano siya? it's the value of related to the nature or to the property of the sliding objects. So, these are usually given in your problems because they are very specific dun sa object na gumagalaw and dun sa, and dun sa floor. If you look at your module for this lesson, there are some lists. Uh, there is a table for the coefficients of friction uh, regarding kung static yung relationship ng dalawang object or nagmove na sila. So, these uh, coefficients, uh, again, uh, is related dun sa property ng mga object. So, balik tayo sa example ko kanina. If you have a rubber shoes and you are running on the grass, iba yung, so since it's running, you are moving, that's a uh, kinetic, that's a kinetic type of friction. Uh, yung coefficient for kinetic friction mo, eh, there is a specific uh, kinet coefficient there. Compared dun sa rubber shoes and sa concrete, as you run, Iba, iba din yung UK niya or yung micro kinetic friction niya. Okay, so I want you guys to remember that just this uh, two, this coefficients for static and coefficients for kinetic is usually given dun sa problem unless it is no solve mo, no? Uh, these are usually given in the problem uh, in order for you to actually solve the force and how much uh, frictional force is being exerted onto the object as you try to push it or as you try to lift it. So let's uh, look at this example here. <coughs> let's move dito. Ayan, sige. <coughs> so sample problem 4.3.2. Okay. So you have a 100 kilogram cray, uh, crate. So let's write down it even. So we have a crate crate, uh, parang siyang box. It's a wooden type of box. Uh, yung mass ng crate is equals to 100 kilogram. And this crate or this box is on a rough horizontal surface. The coefficient of a static friction is, and the coefficient of kinematic friction, kinematic or kinetic friction are 0 0.5 and 0 0.1. So, yung micro S mo is equal to 0 
these don't have units, okay? These are just coefficient values. And yung coefficient for kinematic friction mo is 0 0.1. So those are your given. So let's look and yung tinatanong sa atin. What is the normal force? It's asking, what is the normal force? B, what is the value of the maximum static friction? So what is the value of your Fs max? So maximum static friction. C, what is the minimum horizontal force needed to start the motion? So ang tinatanong is, what is the minimum force na kailangan mo for the object or in this case, for the crate to move. Letter D. What is the value of the kinetic friction? So, ano yung value ng kinetic friction mo or Fk? And lastly, what force is needed to keep the crate moving at a constant speed? So, what is the force you need? What horizontal force you need to keep the object at constant speed or basically constant velocity. So, yung formula na gagamitin mo is the steel, Newton's second law of motion. So, related to that, F is equals to MA. Pero this time, meron lang tayong dadagdag, which is Fs max is equals to the coefficient for uh, static friction multiplied by your Fn or the molar force and your kinetic friction is equals to the coefficient of the kinetic friction multiplied by Fn. It's supposed to be a function form. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead do our solution. Um, in order to do the solution, let's uh, draw a free body diagram. So this is our free body diagram. So we have a crate. So again, so for, for free body diagram, it's up to you. Kung anong klaseng gagamitin mo, you can draw, for example, you can draw something like this, or you can draw just dots. It doesn't matter. And we know, ano ba yung mga forces na ang nag act sa object na to? We know that it is on a horizontal surface, and the horizontal surface is actually quite rough. Okay? And also, merong horizontal force, that is, uh, yung direction niya, hindi binanggit kung saan, I'll just make the direction going to the east. So this is the force. So the, there's a force directed here. And remember, friction is a force that is trying to oppose the, uh, it's a opposite force na, it's, it's the force that is trying to prevent the object from moving. So meron kang force that is directed on the opposite direction. So this is your friction. Moreover, meron kang force which is called the weight that is trying to pull your object towards the center of the earth and since it's on a surface you have a force called the normal force that is equal uh, as mg mo dahil hindi naman siya nagmove up and down you're trying to move the object uh, going uh, left to right okay now let's uh, look at solution Okay, so your first question is, on yung Fn natin? Remember, Fn, there's the relationship between Fn is that it is actually equal to the weight. And we know this because our object is not moving up and down. So therefore, the force, uh, the normal force exerted by the ground should be equal to the force exerted by the crate onto the ground which is called the weight. So you have Fn is equals to weight, which is equal to mg. 
So Fn is equals to mg. And then you just have to get the mass of the crate, which is 100 grams, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Then your Fn is equals to 980 newtons. Okay. B. Uh, so B mo, ano ba yung Fs? Max mo, what is the maximum value ng static friction? Remember, uh, yung static friction is the maximum value <coughs> ng friction uh, na kung saan hindi nag-move yung object mo. So static friction is maximum if the object is uh, just about to move. No? Uh, and remember, friction is proportional sa uh, normal force. So, Fs, this is the Fs max, is the maximum value of the static friction wherein the object is just about to move. And it's equals to the coefficient of the static friction multiplied by the normal force. And ibinigay sa atin yung coefficient ng static friction, which is 0 0.5 multiplied by yung Fn natin, which nakuha natin sa letter A, which is 980 newtons. Therefore, yung ating Fs max is actually equal to 490 newtons. So, this is the maximum force ng Fs max that is pushing the, so that is the friction. This is a friction force. Itong force na to, ha? Uh, that is um, keeping the object from moving. Okay? So, let's, le uh, let's move on to letter C. What is the minimum force needed to move object? Okay, uh, let's go back here. If Fs max is the maximum is the maximum friction uh, wherein the object cannot uh, move, in order for you to move it, you have to exceed this friction. And you can exceed that by having the applied force, the horizontal force, equal to the maximum kinetic or the, the maximum static friction. When the maximum static friction is equal to the kinetic force or is equal to the maximum static force, the object will move because ibig sabihin na exceed na siya. So, so that is equal to 490 newtons. So ibig sabihin, anything less than 490 newtons uh, from the F, from the horizontal force, our object will not move. So if it is, once it is equal to 490 force, it means it is it overcomes it over it finally overcomes the maximum static friction, and finally the object will begin to move. And then remember, when the object is moving, the friction changes from static to kinetic. So now let's try to find what is the kinetic. Uh, what is the value of the kinetic friction? Because remember, the kinetic friction is the force between uh, the opposing force of the horizontal force. That is, um, is the friction between a sliding object. So, meron ka pa friction kahit nagmo-move na yung object. And it is equals to Fa multiplied. Uh, uh, Fa is equals to, or the kinetic friction is equals to the coefficient of the kinetic friction multiplied by the new uh, normal force. And that is equals to 0 0.1 multiplied by 980 newtons. And that is equal to 98 newtons. Yeah, that's 98.0 newtons. So as you can see, remember, the static friction is always greater than uh, kinetic friction. That's why it is easier to maintain the speed 
compared to forcing the object to move. And lastly, what is the force needed in order for the object to have a constant speed or velocity? Remember, constant velocity means the acceleration is zero. In order for you to maintain the object from moving uh, the opposite direction, you just have to have a force that is equal to the kinetic friction. So meaning at 98 newtons, if this object is already moving, the kinetic friction that is forcing it to stop is just 98 newtons. So by having a 98 newtons here, the acceleration would be zero, meaning the velocity is constant. It will just keep moving. So the force that you're exerting is equal to the force that is trying to push it back to stop. Therefore, there is no acceleration, but since it is already moving, it will just keep moving. So from law of inertia, any object that is already on the move, if it is frictionless, it will just keep moving. So the force that you need in order for the object to move at a constant velocity is just equal to the friction force or the kinetic friction. If you want to accelerate it, you have to create an imbalanced force, meaning you have to have a friction or you have to have a force higher than the kinetic friction. So anything that is higher than 98 at 99, so for example, at 99 newtons, for example, if you have a 99 newtons worth of force, so your total force mo that is acting on the object, you have your friction here and you have your force here. So mangyari, since it, uh, let's make this as our positive, so you would have 99 minus 98 is equals to mass over object. So you basically have the acceleration is equals to 1 over the mass, which is 100, and whatever the value of that, uh, that is, which is like 0 0.01 meters per second squared, nagka-accelerate na siya because there is already an imbalance force unbalanced force. Second law of motion, if there is an imbalanced force, the object will move or it, the object will accelerate. But uh, constant speed, the acceleration is zero, meaning we just have to have an equal force on both sides. Okay? Uh, I hope that it's clear. That's all about friction. Uh, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope it's clear. If you guys have any question po, do not hesitate again to message me. Thank you so much and have a great day.